mornings when the sun rises over the winds to the east. I mean, you literally watch the sun come up between mountain peaks and you're already out on a horse in the middle of, you know, 35,000 acres. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. Barcross is a massive private land holding. It's 12,000 acres. And it's not 12,000 acres of hay meadow, like you're typically gonna see. We do have meadows, we do have riparian, and we do have sagebrush. We run cattle on ranch down here, May, June, July, August, hopefully September, some years. We run a one herd high density rotational use. We ship our cattle off of our forest permits in September. We use what's called a regenerative type grazing system. So we're high density, short duration, um, and we're actually seeing quite a bit of success uh, in regenerating these landscapes and really boosting productivity. It's a viable operation in and of itself, and the icing on the cake is the Forest Service permits and the BLM permits. We run on about 23, 25,000 more acres of forest in BLM. We are contiguous though, so our deeded ground, we basically run from the ranch headquarters all the way up um, nearly to the upper green. The Barcross Ranch obviously is an exceptional cattle ranch, uh, but it's so much more than that. It's kind of that perfect balance of recreation and agriculture that so many people are looking for today. You've got two and a half miles of the New Fork River, which is one of the best trout streams in Wyoming. Uh, some consider one of the best in the West. And you have miles and miles of National Forest boundary right out your back gate. The Barcross Ranch offers about eight miles of Willow Creek flowing through the meadows uh, on the Willow Creek portion of the ranch. And I think that's a real untapped resource that provides a lot of opportunity for an incoming owner. This ranch is an incredibly ecologically diverse ranch. Um, it's very blessed in the water resources that it has. I think you'd be really hard pressed to find another ranch with as much diversity of water as this ranch does. We have several thousand acres of actively irrigated flood irrigation. We have three major riparian corridors, two seasonal riparian corridors, and several ponds, and access to Willow Lake actually as well. So I would say that's truly the key to this place is the abundance of the water that is available. For the ecosystem diversity, wildlife diversity, animal performance, all of those things, even social enjoyment, I think of being here and loving where you work. It's huge, the diversity of this place. We have basically two ranches that have been combined. So Barcross was historically one ranch, Willow Creek was historically one ranch. They've been combined into one massive operation now. We headquarter these days mostly out of Willow Creek. That's where our office is, the main heated shop. All of those activities occur here. And then over at Barcross, we have mostly historical buildings still in place, the main ranch house and then a foreman's house as well. The hub of activity is now over here at Willow Creek. And it's nice because the facilities aren't spread out. You have a cluster of buildings on Willow Creek and you have a cluster of buildings on Bar Cross. Super easy for upkeep and overhead, you know, keeping those buildings running. The ranch is, is currently in, in absolute fantastic condition. I mean, it's restored to its former glory, as they would say. We are sitting in the dining room of the original uh, ranch house that's been completely remodeled by the current owner. It's almost more like a museum now than it is. <laughs> it is a house, it's just, it's beautiful. The ranch is located just 15 minutes outside of Pinedale in Cora, Wyoming. It's really one of the gateways into the Wind River mountain range, close proximity to Pinedale, which makes it very accessible. From the ranch gate to Jackson, Wyoming is about an hour. So the Barcross Ranch is, is, again, not only an exceptional cattle ranch, but it's, it really is a sanctuary for a lot of the local wildlife. A lot of the local biologists have deemed this as probably one of the most critical migratory corridors for some of these big game species, especially the antelope and the mule deer that pass through this ranch every spring and every fall. One of the things of the, about the West that draws people here is the same thing that drew me here, just the wide open spaces, great people, great small communities like Pinedale. I think the Barcross has just really the full spectrum of, of the Western experience, from cattle drives, horsemanship, riding horses, 
uh, exploring the National Forest literally right out the back gate to all the recreational activities people look for in a Wyoming ranch. You have fisheries on site as well as just on the adjacent National Forest. And you also have just tremendous elk, deer, antelope hunting, the Wind River Range, the Wyoming Range, the Grovance, uh, just some of the prettiest mountain ranges in the state of Wyoming are literally surrounding this valley. The ranch was founded back in the early part of the 20th century uh, by a guy named P.K. Jenkins. In the final years of the family owning it, which was in the, in the late 70s and early 80s, it was run by his grandson, who was a guy named John Perry Barlow. One of the interesting things about John Perry Barlow is that he was sent off to boarding school. In boarding school, he met a guy named Bob Weir. And many people know who Bob Weir is, as he was the founder of the Grateful Dead. He and John Perry were, were friends uh, for many years. He teamed up with Bob Weir, and, and he, he actually wrote over 30 songs for the Grateful Dead that he's responsible for, and he was part of that whole life and that lifestyle. When we sold this ranch the first time in 1988 uh, for John Barlow, there were multiple mortgages to members of the Grateful Dead because they'd all kind of helped John out. Bar Cross is a beautiful place. It's absolutely beautiful. And it, it's still one of those places that feels wild and untouched. The West is very much alive here. You don't see necessarily the impact or feel close to populations or people. It's so large, you just feel like you're a spectator. Maybe in the middle of it, like you're privileged to sit there and be there. It's kind of a last of a kind 